Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you clicked on this video. Um, in today's episode, I want to talk to you about my November recap for budgeting. So this month I actually received a pay adjustment and I got a little bit of an increase in my budget. And so with that, I decided to put more towards an allotment that I have. Um, and then that kind of like adjusted what I have as well. So basically I didn't really get an increase in my pay because I put that extra money towards an allotment um, that goes to a savings account in a different bank so I don't touch it at all. Um, so let me just go over quickly what I do for my budget. Um, so I'm not an Excel spreadsheet kind of person because budgets for me are always changing and I just trying to be more and more realistic. I know when I first started, I was like, was being super strict about what I would budget for as far as like my sinking funds, as far as like miscellaneous or food or groceries. And as over time this year, I've learned that it's more important for me to be realistic about the money that I spend in different categories um, so that I don't end up spending that money on my credit card. And then if I spend on my credit card, then I end up taking more money out of my budget to pay that. And that's less money towards meeting some of my goals. So um, if you don't know, if you don't follow my, my blog or my Instagram under the same name, my attempt at adulting, um, let me just tell you a little bit. So I have about, I started with about 30 something thousand dollars in student loans and last November I actually started getting really, really serious about paying it off. And so this year so far I've paid, um, almost $12,000 towards my student loan. And I do that by a couple of different things. The most important one is I live with my parents. And so that helps me tremendously because when I lived on my own, I paid $12.50 a month for rent. And then I didn't include utilities and all that other stuff. And so I've been super grateful to be able to live back come back with my parents and live with them to save um, that much money each month and put it towards my student loans. Um, I've also been able to, over this past month and a half, been able to not use my credit card, which has allowed me to have put more money towards my student loan. So let me just dive in into the adjusted budget that I have for this, um, this month going forward, unless something happens, I get a promotion or an increase or whatever. Um, so I'm going to go over it. I'm also going to have it somewhere over here so you can see as I talk. Um, so the first thing that I do is I... 10% uh, of each of my paychecks or any bonus or any extra money like tax refund I give 10% to the Lord um, and that's the first thing that I comes out I have my car insurance and my rent um, I pay rent to my parents um, they don't really ask for it but I just want to be able to give back to them just a little portion um, I sponsor two children um, if you're interested in sponsoring children I um, do it through this organization organization called one child um, there's tr like a lot of other organizations that do this but um, it's really it helps me because I'm giving back and I'm giving to people um, uh, giving back to children and it just uh, it's, it's just something that I like to do I like to give back and I like to help children so this was a really great way and to be able to receive their letters every month is just so great and knowing that I'm helping out with um, children who are less privileged than I am in other countries. Um, the only subscription really that I have is Apple Music. So that comes out automatically. I have my phone bill. Um, and I also have two trips that I am uh, paying towards. So if you are 18 to 29, it seems like <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not sponsored. I wish I was sponsored, but um, it, it, I'm just gonna tell you. So if you're 18 to 29 years old, there's a website called EF Ultimate Break and they have a lot of different trips that you can go on and you can do like payment plans. So you pay a 150 deposit and then you go, depending on when your trip is from when you purchase it, um, will depend on how much money you put down. So we have two trips to me and my sister to Europe next month. I mean, next year. So really excited. So I have those two um, um, uh, deposits, not the right word. I have those two amounts coming out for those trips. I also am saving uh, $100 each month 
for a travel savings account. So I have about $400 in there now. And so my goal is to just always continue to put at least 100 in there a month so that I if there is a trip that I want to go on or something spontaneous or whatever, I always have money in that account and I don't have to worry about putting it on my credit card. Or if it's not enough, I don't have to put all of it on my credit card. So I would suggest if you love to travel that you also set up a savings account just for traveling and you continue to put money in there so that you always have something there um, whenever you feel like going on a trip. Um, I also do 200 a month for my regular savings account. And I'm trying to get that up because um, at one point my credit card was over a thousand dollars and so I decided to take money from my savings account and put it to pay down my credit card and so now I'm just rebuilding that um, and then I'm also trying to get a new laptop so I'm putting 150 a month to a, um, a laptop fund I'm calling it um, so about eight nine months I'll be able to get my new laptop and then I have my sinking funds. So the things that I use sinking funds, if you don't know what sinking funds are, let's start with that. They are, um, well, I use cash envelopes. So I use the cash envelope system. So these are um, some that I sell on my website and um, they have the holes in it. So if you want to put a binder in it, you can do that or you can have it without it. Um, but um, this is just cash that I take out of my check each month or each paycheck and put towards different categories. I have a health fund, gas, food, groceries, cleaners, and miscellaneous. And so I take out a, some money, a portion of money from my check each month and put them in my envelopes. And this is the money that I try to stick to and only use and not use my card. And this helps me to stay on budget and on task and allow me to pay, um, allow me to pay off my student loan faster because I'm just using what I allocated and so this is kind of what I was talking about in the beginning of my video about being realistic about your budget because I've been super strict before and ended up spending my credit card so now I decided to be super realistic about what how much I actually spend on these things and put that towards it um, so you can choose whatever you want for um, your sinking funds those are just some that I use that I know I use a lot um, and then if there's a month, sometimes if there's a month where I don't really need to, like when it's coming like holiday season, I'm not going to be at work that often. I don't really need to put that much money towards my cleaners fund because I'm not going to be going in. Or um, if I'm not going to be driving that often, I may not need gas. Or if I still have money from left over, I'll not put the whole amount in there. <clears throat> the last thing that I also wanted to talk about before I finish this video is the third paycheck. So this month I got three paychecks and I was super excited because I love extra money. And so um, a couple of things that you can do with it with a third paycheck is to pay down um, loan, pay down debt. Uh, you can put it towards savings or, or you can uh, put it towards... How I have my travel savings or my laptop fund, you could put it towards stuff like that to help you. Um, what you don't want to do with a third paycheck is to just blow it all because you're going to end up needing that. And it's like while you may have instant gratification now, like it would be so much better. Like you can have a portion of that where you can just like do whatever, treat yourself and all that other stuff. But you want to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success in the future. And the other thing that you want to be aware of when you have a third paycheck is when your next paycheck will fall in the, the following month. So for me, I realized that my first paycheck in December won't come until the 13th. And so I wanted to be mindful about what bills were due before the 13th and to pay those off with this third paycheck. So I would just just say, look at your bills. I like to write down like a month and then put down beside each day when my bills are due and how much. And then I like to see when I am getting paid that month so that I can say, okay, these bills I can pay with this check, these bills I can pay with this check. And it's just helpful so you don't forget and you don't miss payment. And then you ended up doing all this other stuff with the third paycheck. So um, this was my November recap. Um, and uh, yeah, this is my November recap. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to put some more videos out for you guys on budgeting and travel and food. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.